new Van Gogh painting discovered. Welcome to Mark and Pete. Uh, here's a thought. Cutting critique. There once was a painter called Van Gogh whose critics would sneer and scoff. After rejection every year, it turned his world on its ear. So he simply cut it off. <laughs> yes. Clergyman Pete. Yes, he did. A previously unknown self-portrait by Vincent van Gogh has been discovered hidden on the back of another painting. Now, experts at the National Galleries of Scotland have made the find when the canvases was actually x-rayed before an exhibition. Well, before we get into the detail, I ask you, what's your interpretation of Van Gogh's work? Do you like it or not? Well, I've got to admit that um, I'm not a fan of his work. No, I, I, I normally on this show say I'm a fan of everyone, um, but that, that's <laughs> I'm actually joking when I say that. Just to be honest, for a moment, I'm, I'm not a fan of his work. I'm a fan of him in that I, I oh. read a biography of him years ago. I'm fascinated by his life. Yep. And his brother, who was so supportive of him, comes out very well from it. And so I see that uh, it's often described as a, a tortured soul. I see that side. Yes. Fascinated by his Christian faith, of course, as a clergyman. And, and just uh, he, he's, he's an interesting human being, and I would like to have met him. Um, but the work, the actual paintings themselves, they just – leave me cold they do they do nothing for me although i i mean i recognize that um what he's famous for is being innovative bringing a different yes. technique and style to it i can see that i understand that but in terms of actually appreciating the work no i'm afraid it doesn't do anything for me no well that's a shame because i think guess what um i'm gonna say completely the opposite because mm. I, although i know that during vincent van Gogh's lifetime he i believe didn't sell many paintings i think he only sold one but the point here is is that you've got to put the everything into context when he was actually sort of becoming an artist and sort of really finding his techniques and interpretation both either in portraiture or landscapes i'm going to give my honest opinion and feel that he was a huge innovator when it came to interpretation of the landscapes i think his application of oils um onto the canvas the uh, whole idea of the way the landscape moves with the rhythm of his paint is fantastic i don't believe that there are many artists that have been able to really capture a scene now whether that be a sunflower scene um, sort of star spangled skyscape or interpretations of movement of cloud I suppose the closest, albeit a different type of artist, if you think about uh, Turner and the way that he evoked a certain um, emotion through his um, interpretations of a, of a subject matter, would be something, again, I sort of valued. I think that Van Gogh was very good at that. Now, the one thing we need to come to is, is this actual painting, because it's actually a hidden self portrait that was covered yep. by layers of glue and cardboard on the back of an earlier work. The earlier work was called The Head of a Peasant Woman. That's very clear. And that can be seen um, quite distinctively. Now, do I like that interpretation? Perhaps not. I think that it's quite a naive looking painting. I, again, really emphasize I didn't think portraiture was his strength. I'm sure there are lots of people who are listening to this podcast think differently. We'd love to hear mm, from you. But, yeah, absolutely. But what we can tell you is, is that um, this particular piece starts to reveal what the artist was doing. Um, a lot of artists were very familiar with actually taking a canvas and trying out different experiments, effectively working on one technique, maybe looking at a different subject matter and moving on to something else. Now, the reason they did this, and you've got to think about Vincent van Gogh, he wasn't exactly the wealthiest person in the world. So obviously materials were very, very important, paints and canvases. So any sort of application to something like a canvas board um, was really important to him. So I think this is a great find for a number of reasons. One, it gets to understand a, a moment in time and what the artist was thinking and doing. Two, of course, uh, you've really got two for one sort of here, and I know it's not a complete portraiture, but I, I think anything like this, which sort of gets deeper into the, um, you know, the, the catalogue of, of an artist is, is really good. And, and again, I really want to emphasise, whilst I don't necessarily need to dwell on the artistic side of this portrait, I do think that Vincent van Gogh has played an enormous part in innovating art generally. Mm. Yes. So, yeah, I, I take that all on board. I, uh, you know, you know far more about the subject than me, but... Um, 
what's interesting to me is the person uh, of Van Gogh. And so yes. it's it, to me this the it's it's almost as though really the find is more important than the art in that it is it's in a that picture sense, of him. Yes. It's a picture of him, and it's a new picture of him. And as, as you were talking there about his uh, way, as his approach to his painting, uh, you were saying he he puts across his impression, and you you related it to Turner's work as well. So he, he if you're seeing his impression of him, then actually you're getting uh, an insight into the person, which uh, be interesting. I'd like to have a a look at the. At the I hope they'll be able to release or put the put the painting on show. Do you yeah. know if there's any plans to do that? Have you heard? Well, that? I think what's interesting is the history of this. So here's a bit of history. So the peasant woman was considered more finished than the self-portrait, mm -hmm. but the painting changed hands several times. Right. Now, obviously, um, uh, Van Gogh himself, the man, the artist, um, he died in 1890. As mm -hmm. the hand, <laughs> the actual painting itself, it did um, uh, actually fall into the hands of Evelyn um, St. Croix Fleming, who was son, whose son, Ian, oh, became yeah. the creator of James Bond. There you go. Um, so there's, a, there's an interesting sort of connect there. Um, but what I think that what people are doing is trying to get a, a little bit more sense of the actual piece itself. So they're still discovering it. Remember, this was, um, again... 21st century is, techniques. Is it still, is it still just uh, an x-ray of that? They've actually got it into the open. Yes. I believe they have actually sort of got it. it. It shows a bearded sitter in a brimmed hat with a neckerchief loosely tied around his throat, i.e. Vincent van Gogh himself. Yes. And w what he's doing, and this is the other thing about it for those who have seen it, um, like a lot of his portraits, he has this very fixing stare, very intense stare, um, which is to the right side of his face. And you can see the, in the shadow um, the left side, which is clearly more visible. Um, most artists and art historians are obviously jubilant over this findings. What I will say is, is that, again, I, I'm less concerned about the individual side of the actual piece. I come back to it is another discovery of a moment in time. Yes, it helps yeah. to explain a little bit more about the journey. So remember, part of this is going back to what we now clearly knew as the head of a peasant woman, which is the one everyone saw which when it was displayed. Yeah. It's the fact that it's on the other side yeah. that everybody's now realised, actually, whenever you have a painting, and this is my thought, and I'm, we'd love to, if there's anyone who is an archivist, anyone who's an art historian or anyone who is at a gallery, is it now a policy where you go through these techniques, where you're actually starting to x-ray things to discover more, not just about the actual layers and techniques, of course, you can dig deep, you can look at the pigmentation, you can go really deep in terms of seeing how the artist actually built up their, um, their technique. That's how good um, we can get scientifically. But I'd be very interested to know is that have we done that with other artists? Yeah. Vincent van Gogh may have actually done that on the back of many other paintings. Let's take a look at some of his sunflower series. What has he done yeah. on the back of those? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, fascinating, isn't it? To see what, what else we might learn with these yeah. new techniques. Uh, I think, you know, it'd be interesting. Uh, well, Maybe talk about this after the show. It might be interesting to do an episode on Vincent van Gogh and maybe some other artists because a lot of them lead very fascinating lives and we've not really uh, touched on them in market. That's so. where the story is. Mm, that's where the story is, yeah. So uh, let us know, gentle listener, by going to markandpete.com. Uh, just sign up there to leave a comment. You don't need to sign up to listen to the show. Just listen away to all the episodes. But uh, uh, if you want to leave a comment, just sign up at markandpete.com. And we'd love to hear from you. And let us know, uh, of course, if you have a an invaluable painting in your home, because we'll be around to still. I mean, we'll be around to, to see it. Uh, anyway, that's it for Mark and Pete for this week. Bye for now. Thank you.